Bill Paul, a member of a church in Whittier, California, went on a weekend summer retreat with about 10 fellow community group members. Uh, they went to the beautiful Sierra Nevada mountains and the second morning they went on a hike and after hiking for a while they came upon a, a beautiful cascade about 15 feet wide and the water was pouring over into this lush ravine and uh, the rocks were smooth from decades of the water pouring on them and it formed kind of a microscopic algae on the rocks which made it tre treacherous to cross. As Bill inched his way across, his feet slipped out from under him and he went head over heels and his head landed splat on a outcropped rock. Uh, for about three minutes, uh, the other members of his group thought that he was dead. He made no movement and he could feel that he was seriously hurt and he could feel himself going in and out of uh, consciousness. Um, they prayed for him. Uh, they pulled him out of the water. Um, he said during that time, while they were praying, he had a distinct impression that he could choose life or death. He's, he saw a dark tunnel and a bright light on the other end, and he said, Jesus, I'm not ready to die yet. And just then he came back to life. And his group members were thrilled, and he felt a sharp pain on the back of his head, and it was a lump the size of a grapefruit. So later that afternoon, they prayed for that, and it, the swelling went away, and he was completely healed. Wow. Have you ever had a miracle like that in your life? Have you ever experienced God's supernatural power in any way like that? You wonder, should we? Can we? I think we can. Jesus says, you will do greater works than these, because I'm going to my Father, and He will send you the Comforter. Uh, Jesus taught that the great miracles that he did, the great things he did, we would do even greater because he would go to his Father and send his Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit would dwell in each one of us, kind of multiplying his power. And we saw this uh, lived out in the book of Acts. Uh, the apostles all were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to preach boldly about the resurrection of Jesus. 5,000 people became followers of Christ within a few weeks. The Apostles did what were called signs and wonders, many miracles. Uh, then some of the apostles went to other cities and other Christians took the gospel further away from Judea. And uh, people all around the world eventually came to know about Christ until it has spread to like 2.2 billion followers of Christ today. Anytime you help someone come to faith in Christ, you are snatching someone away from the grip of Satan. Why don't we see more of God's supernatural powers today? I want you to turn off the video for a moment and just ask that question. Uh, have you seen God's supernatural power in, in your life? And I want you to direct it particularly to, the, uh, to leading people into a relationship with Christ. Have you ever been involved in that and felt like God's supernatural power is working with you? Share about that or not. If you've never had that experience, uh, tell your group members that. When you're done, come on back. I have a couple other things to say. This is the second in a series of messages, Have You Seen God's Supernatural Power Lately? I'm asking the question, why don't we see God's supernatural power so much today? I mean, Jesus did all kinds of miracles. The apostles did. Prophets like Elijah and Elisha did. Why don't we see them so much today? Should we? Can we? Uh, for our instruction, we're turning to the prophet Elisha, uh, an Old Testament prophet who was known for his miracles. I want to read from you 2 Kings chapter 4. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. So this guy was a young guy, a company of the prophets, kind of a, a trainee, maybe you could say a poor seminary student today. And he left behind uh, a poor widow and two sons and a lot of debts. And so the creditor said, I'm going to take your boys and they can work for me until they work off the debt. 
That actually was pretty usual. Mosaic law said that if you owed money, uh, the creditor could take you and your children to work for him until the debt was paid. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Uh, the Hebrew word for oil uh, tells us that she had like a little flask of oil that maybe was used for the body. Uh, when Elisha learned that he, she had that oil, he told her to go to every neighbor possible, get every pot and jar she could. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons, pour out all the oil into jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. Imagine how amazed they were. They just kept pouring and pouring. More oil kept coming out. But they replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. So what can we learn from this, uh, this miracle? Any story in the Bible, you can figure out uh, different things that it might mean, uh, but I wanna just talk about one thing. God shows his supernatural power through us and through what we have. Elisha asked the widow, what do you have in your house? Why do you think he did this? I mean, he could have just gotten some wealthy man to give her a handful of cash. Problem solved. It's the reason God asks what we have or what we have in our house, what our resources is, is because he likes to work with us and through us. And the reason I think he likes to do that is because that builds our faith. Uh, I think the whole time the woman was searching for jars and her sons were out asking for pots uh, was so they could build their faith. And then when they were pouring the oil out of the flask, they must have been amazed at seeing, it just keeps coming, Mom. It's just more and more, they're filling up more and more jars and they're building their faith in God and that Elisha is truly a prophet. When he, Elisha first asked her if she had anything, she said, I don't have anything. Then she remembered she had a little oil. I think God wants to do the same thing with us. Many of us think we don't have anything, no gifts that God can use. Truth is you have talents, you have spiritual gifts, you have abilities, you have resources. God using those can multiply those and use you in great ways uh, in the world. All right, I'd like you to uh, talk now with your group. I'd particularly like you to talk about why did Elisha ask what the woman had in her house and maybe asking yourselves the question, what gifts do you have? What abilities do you have, resources that God could use? Uh, and then maybe talk about the journals. Uh, if people have come with the journals uh, answered, uh, share their answers. If they've come with the blank journals, uh, I think you could just take the time and look them up on your iPhones, uh, the, the verses, and, and answer them right on the spot. Uh, then when you're done, I'd like you to pray. Pray for each other. Uh, ask big requests. God is a big God, and so he deserves big requests. And make your requests specific. Uh, by that I mean specific enough that next week you'll know whether or not he answered them. All right, have a good discussion.